remove your hats. This way you won't go bald at an early age. I want you to stand there and think about how you got here. I want you to think about your parents, think about your family, think about your coaches, think about the youth coaches, think about the people that work with you every day, think about your community, think about your school. This has been a great journey for you all. And for the young men that are just starting to across the middle town, it's a great opportunity for them to see young men perform on the field. I've been very fortunate. I could have been a frustrated baseball player. Started as a ninth grade catcher on varsity. All my friends would play lacrosse. Went to a parochial school. We didn't have lacrosse. And luckily, the high school coach allowed me to come out for lacrosse. And uh, that really marked a lot of good things for me. So we stand here and think about what we just talked about. Thank you. Would you have a seat? This game is certainly very, very special. When I got the opportunity to uh, play the cross at Salonica High School, uh, my high school coach was also the freshman football coach. We had very, very fine athletes at the school. My graduating class was about 845. Uh, graduated in 1955. Very exciting time in my life. I remember graduation weekend. Friday night, he hosted a dinner for 12 of us, 12 seniors. We all come up to different colleges because of him. We all played lacrosse because of him. We all developed our spirit and belief in his game through him. He was a player that played at Syracuse. He was in the United States Navy during the Second World War. Very, very strong with fundamentals, very strong with discipline very strong in pushing his game to different areas. Our league consisted of nine teams. That's nine teams on one out. Today there are over 100. Coast to coast, one of the things he said at that dinner that Friday night was, I'd love you all to become missionaries for this game. Think about that, a missionary. That means go off into the wilderness, go off into areas that have nothing to do and try to develop this game to the fullest. So, you know, we're all 17, 18 years of age. A couple guys had no idea what a missionary was. And then you know, the only thing when you do that, you're eventually going to become a disciple for the game. And that means you're going to help the growth of this game. I remember going to the airport with a lacrosse stick one time when it was legal to carry this was not considered a weapon, but it was legal to carry athletic equipment. And the interesting thing is, somebody came up to me and wanted to know where the crabs were in Pittsburgh. And I had no idea what he was talking about. And I showed it to him and I said, you know, it's, it's very obvious. You, you don't know a thing about Native Americans. And he said, oh, what kind of game is this? I said, it's a Native American game. But it goes back centuries. Last Thursday night, I had an opportunity to be at a dinner. 550 people attended this dinner. It's called the Twartan. Twartan and Mohawk means lacrosse. And the tribal groups that were there was held at the National uh, Native American Museum. If you've never been there, please get there. It's a magnificent facility. Next year, we're hoping through raising funds that we will have a great lacrosse display. And when I came up here, you're probably wondering, why is that guy carrying crutches? They're not crutches. This stick here we use it, was used in the movie The Last Mohegans. Now, all you guys are out there with beautiful plastic sticks. I know any audience here, there are coaches that play with wooden sticks. This was given to me by a gentleman by the name of Sid James, Native American, Tuscarora Indian. Outstanding coach at Bucknell, both in football and cross. I cherish this because it is really symbolic of what the Native Americans have done for us with this game. How many people here have seen Crooked Arrow? Okay. 
Crooked Arrow has a couple great messages. Unfortunately, they forgot that moving picks are not allowed, and they forgot that you can't hit somebody from behind, and you can't knock somebody's helmet off. Uh, I think the producers had no idea what they were thinking about, because the first, first crunch I saw was stuff that is Ill, totally illegal. So I think they were trying to state that this prep school that was playing a reservation school that it would be a contact sport because of Native Americans. That's not the way they play the game. Their stick work is outstanding. Outstanding. This stick here was used in 1927. You measure tomorrow, you get the ball, you're shooting for the winning goal, and you play with a stick like this. Pretty interesting. This stick here was made last Thursday night. And this is one of the original sticks. Used around the 15th century. Right here. Someone said, how do you get a pot in that? Very easy. You can catch the ball that was made out of gut, feathers, and you cradle and you play. Leather, feathers. I never got the idea of what the feathers are all about. It was very obvious. He was a pretty good player. So this stick was presented to me the other night. And I think it would be nice for you to know a little bit about the history of this game. And the history is, Check out what the Native American athletes have done. Produce this game, get it going, reservations, and play box lacrosse. Stick work is outstanding, and it's really got a great history. Now, you have an opportunity for teams that are playing tomorrow to make history. I can recall at Salonica High School, we were very fortunate. I was part of a team that won 58 straight games. Uh, upon graduation, that streak continued, and we got up to 91. I happened to be in Maryland because I was at the University of Maryland the day that the street was broken by St. Paul's in Baltimore, Maryland. Number of years later, at Hofstra University, West Genesee High School had an opportunity to break the record. I should say how it did not happen, but there was a strange call on a goal situation, and they did not break the record. So West Genesee and Swanica High School shared the 91 game winning streak. Now you imagine players that played for that man that had the 91 game winning streak. Number one, we worked hard in the classroom. Number two, none of us ever missed school. Never. I remember sneaking out the back door, I had strep throat, went to school, and uh, the nurse wanted to send me home. And I said, oh, I want to stay here as long as I can today. So he was such a character builder and a man of integrity and a man that believed that young men can contribute greatly. You're going to be doing that tomorrow and for the future. There's going to be winners and people that don't win. I don't like the word losers. I don't like the word quit. The winner is going to have an opportunity to cherish this opportunity tomorrow. The team that doesn't win has the same opportunity. Think about this. Some of your teams have gone, some of your players have gone through 18 game schedules, some 19, some 20. That's a lot of effort, a lot of desire, a lot of drive. The ones that make it may make it by one goal, may, wait, may make it by more. Sometimes when a championship is built up to a crescendo, uh, things don't work out the way you think they should. I remember we were in the other goal going into a national championship game. Extremely hot, about 100 degrees, about 8 o'clock in the morning. Game field was probably about 120, playing on turf. And we decided we were going to either win the game in the first half or lose it. And our opponent thought we were going to hold the ball. At halftime, we had 10 1. And we were really an underdog in that game. I've always believed in being an underdog. Okay, I was coached that way, taught that way. We had a 42 game winning streak in Cornell. We never talked about the ministry. We talked about the next game. We talked about how important it is to respect your opponent. Sportsmanship. My feeling is lacrosse. There's still one of the few sports in the United States that have sportsmanship trophies. They have been in about five states that I've recently been in. And that's the first thing I ask some of the coaches and some of the instructors. Because the winner's sportsmanship trophy that means you're being evaluated by many, many people. 
And sportsmanship is something special in this game. Native Americans, their game, gave it to us. Missionaries, disciples, people that carried this game. And the beauty of that is that you are reaching for a ring tomorrow, that golden ring. Some are going to miss it, some are going to make it. But I take my hat off to every team that's here tomorrow. Some of the teams that are here tomorrow won very, very important games leading up to this. I'm delighted at the fact that you're here. I've had an opportunity to see some of the players throughout the day here. Uh, our Irish team is here working out. We have a walkthrough. They're at dinner right now. We'll have a chalk talk in about 20 minutes. And we'll get ready to play. Coaching in Ireland has been a great delight for me. My wife wanted me to get a hobby. And I think she thought I was going to redo the kitchen, redo the patio. And immediately I got the yellow pages and said, Pat, pick out any carpenter, any plumber. Uh, I'm not doing that stuff. I'm not skilled in that. And then this thing came about to coach the Irish team in 2001. In 2000, we went to the European Games. And the teams they played against did not take any survivors. Sweden beat Ireland 27 to 1. Okay? Finland beat Ireland 33 to 4. All right? Imagine getting whomped in those kind of games. Well, two years later, we beat both those teams. Next week, on the 15th of June, I'll be going to Ireland. We train for four days, and then we'll go to Amsterdam to play in the European Games. The growth of the European sport of lacrosse is tremendous. Israel just put a team together. They'll be at the European Games as a person that's involved with lacrosse for the first time. The World Games are going to be here in the United States in 2014. And you're probably saying, well, what's that mean to me? Well, if there's young men in this audience that are first generation Swiss, Swedish, Polish, you'd be surprised. You might qualify to play for those teams. But you can also qualify possibly as you go on into college. By 2014, some of you young men are probably going to be sophomores. And they do have tryouts in the World Games. So it's, it's a thrill to know that the cross has come this far. The games on television have really helped the growth coast to coast. At this dinner last Thursday night, a young man from Colgate was a recipient of the best player in the country, Peter Bonham. Peter Bonham, five years ago, was playing in Oregon. Can anybody tell me the capital of Oregon? Anybody know the capital of Oregon? I'm sorry? <laughs> Keep going. Sail. Okay, so nobody really knew about Oregon. Now all of a sudden, this gentleman comes up. Great skills. If you hadn't had a chance to see him play, I'm sure Colgate will be on television next year. They had a great playoff series. They lost it, their last game. But for him to win this honor, it was unbelievable. And he was with four other players that played with tremendous teams. So I'm delighted that Peter as a junior won that. When he came up to get the award, he was so choked up that we had to give him about two or three minutes to go backstage and compose himself. And he said to me later that night, he said, you know, I never ever dreamt when I was dropping the ball, when I was making mistakes, when I thought that this game wasn't for me. This game, by the way, is a game of peaks and valleys. Some days you're going to be way up there, some days you're going to be down. Some days you're going to say, why am I playing this game? Number one, I'm too small. Number three, or number two, I'm too, too slow. Number three, I'm not strong enough. Well, I disagree with those. Because I've had players five foot six, made first team all American, scored seven goals. Great tennis player decided to play the cross. So basically, always have confidence in your ability. Don't let somebody say, well, he's not really a good attacker. Well, if you're not a good attacker, you might be a great defenseman. I had a young man that came to Cornell, and the reason I had to come to Cornell, I watched him play basketball in high school, and I was recruiting one of his teammates. And uh, I saw him play. And I said to the coach two days later when I went to visit the school, I said, uh, can I talk to Chris Kane? He's his coach. Chris Kane's only scored two goals in two years. I said, wait a minute. I'm not looking at him as a scorer. Chris Kane to Cornell became a defenseman, three-time All-American, voted the outstanding defenseman in the country twice. So here again, don't sell yourself short. 
tomorrow, the young men that live here in Middletown, or your host, they're going to gain a lot from watching you perform. The youth programs that you all came from and the programs that are now starting in Middletown, they're going to help this town get to where all of you are now. I remember five years ago going to a tournament over Penn Yen, and there's no doubt in my mind, sitting in my lap, there's boys and men from that youth program. Ithaca, we have gentlemen in our town that started a youth program. I could be off a couple years, but probably 15 years ago. And the end results have been what we've seen over the last couple years. Now, there's areas that don't have youth programs. I didn't have a youth program when I was growing up. But I did have people that would help me. When you go back home, after this is all over, you may want to take some young man in your neighborhood and show him what a lacrosse stick is. Now, we don't want to take him away from basketball. We don't want to take him away from track. We don't want to take him away from football or soccer. But playing the game of lacrosse, a lot of agility, a lot of quickness, size in that period. Joe Herman played for the Baltimore Colts. Played for Syracuse his final year of school to prove, because he had come off a knee injury, to prove to the scouts that he could be mobile. Joe was a very, very good athlete. Joe got at Pat Gallagher. Pat Gallagher was five foot seven. Joe Herman was six foot six. Okay, the shadow is unbelievable. He's like David Goliath. Pat Gallagher scored three goals, two assists. And that wasn't because Joe Herman was bad. That's because Pat Gallagher, he had a heart the size of his body. Great ground ball guy. Someone said to me, Coach, what do you look for? I look for attitude, I look for character. I look for a young man that's going to go up, give his mother a kiss, his dad a hug, his guardian a kiss or a hug, loves his family. That's the type of man that are going to win championships. And I was so delighted over my years at Cornell to have those type of men. And it's very simple. You know, I asked a guy the other day, when was the last time you hugged your mother? He said, probably about three weeks ago. I said, really? I said, I think you would go up and do it now. He said, coach. I said, don't be embarrassed. She's a very important person in your life. Just go up there and do it. I called him the other day. He said, coach, I'm hugging her every day. To me, that's what this is all about. You're going to get hugs and kisses. You're going to get pats on the back tomorrow. You're going to get people that are going to feel for you. You're going to gain an awful lot from this game. Your growth period is beautiful. I saw a couple of freshmen today, and their eyes are popping. Okay, they're popping. This is a totally new experience for them. Okay? They may be next year's champions. That is a beautiful experience. You've come down a great road. There's been some detours. There's been some stop signs. There's been some go signs, but the beautiful thing about it is that you will keep going and keep developing. Specialization, please do me a favor. Don't just specialize in lacrosse. Play other sports. Your body will develop better, your mind will develop better, your agility will develop better, and you become a much better team player if you play other sports. I don't care if you play bocce, badminton, whatever. But just don't play only lacrosse. I went to Texas and we had a session like this, but a lot of parents had questions. And I always have cards given out early so they can write the question down. And I looked at a couple of questions. They talked about personal trainers. They talked about my son plays lacrosse 300 days a year. And of course, I'm not against personal trainers, but I don't think a young man 12 years old needs a personal trainer. I think I need a personal trainer, but not a guy that's 12. Second thing, doing the days of cross is not going to help him. Because he's going to get to a certain level and not getting better. But if he plays hockey, plays soccer, agility, quickness. So if you've got people that just want to specialize in cross and go to 14 elite camps and travel all over the country, because they think by doing that, they're going to walk into a Division I, Division II, Division III school and be a player there and get a scholarship there. A very limited amount of scholarships. Do well in the classroom. Play other sports. 
contribute to the community. Someone once said, Coach, what do your players do when they're not on the cross field? At Cornell, like any other university in the country, you have a tremendous amount of academic responsibility. You're going to be independent, which means you're going to get up on your own, you're going to go to your meals, you're going to do your own laundry, you're going to get homesick. I'm still homesick. I was in the United States Marine Corps. I was homesick for four years. Went to college, I was homesick. Okay? But the nice thing about it, by you staying in touch with reality, Staying in touch with the things that are making it better for you in your life. Academics, summer's coming. Do a little reading. There's some great books out there. A book that you may want to read, which I suggest often, is called The Greatest Generation. The Greatest Generation is probably what your grandfathers and grandparents went through. Tom Brokaw wrote the book. You can pick it up in the library. You'll find out some very interesting things about your country. It's a book that I recommend, and when I go visit people and they host me, I always drop this book off to them. And they say, Coach, what's this all about? I said, I want your sons and daughters to read this. Because I had no idea what the United States was like in 1939 to 1946. Recommend movies, Hoosiers, Titans, Blindside. They're great movies. Rudy. I had a young man come up to me and he says, Coach, I'm too small to play this game. I said, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to get the movie Rudy. I want you to watch it. King came up a couple days later. He's a coach. That was sensational. That's just what I needed. And when I played lacrosse in a Division II school, played in a national championship, won, started, and to me that was a delight. There are a lot of Rudys out there in all levels. Don't ever sell yourself short. You got a great thing going for yourself. Tomorrow, when you all shake hands at the conclusion of your game, that is a feeling that I think is sensational. The winners may have a smile on their face, but I'll be rooting for the people that did not win because I know how tough that can be. So, tomorrow, enjoy the moment. Tonight, get a good rest. Coaches probably tell you about fluid. Definitely drink a lot of water tonight. Dreams are magnificent. Your eyes will be popping tomorrow. You'll be running harder than you've ever run before. You'll be working with your teammates better than you've ever done before. I just went through a walkthrough. We're going to use a couple of rides tonight that I know some of those players have never been involved in. Their riding is like in their mind, it's taking a bus. Okay, in my mind, it's running with vengeance, stealing the ball. So get a chance if you've got free time, I'm not too sure what your schedule is. Those guys better be running tonight. We talked about riding, we talked about a 10 man ride, we talked about various other rides that we're going to use. And the beauty of it is, two players came over from Ireland two weeks ago. When I first met them four years ago, Game of lacrosse there. One was a great hurling player. The other one was a great Irish football player. Ages 15 and 16. Two years after they started playing lacrosse, we went to Wales to play in the Celtic Cup. There was no way we were going to win. Okay, Scotland was better, Wales was better, England was better, and France for some reason was in the Celtic Cup. They were not better than us, but we knew that the other three countries were. Luckily, we won two in a row. The other teams panicked a little bit. We won three in a row. And we won the championship. At the championship, the mayor of Cardiff came up and put medals on all the players. Now, we stayed in Cardiff for a while to tour Wales. Went back to Ireland on a plane, medals. Next morning, we all had breakfast together, medals. Next day, we go for a little workout, medals. So I said to Patrick O'Leary, I said, Patty, you know, you got to guess, put those medals away sometime. He said, Coach, you don't quite understand. In the United States, you get a medal for going to the library, going to church, going to school. In Ireland, this is our first medal we ever got. I said, Patty, very favorite. I'll tell you, it caught me because, you know, we're accustomed to all these beautiful awards. 
And what I love is a handshake. And what I love is when you go up to your coach and thank him. And what I like is when some some starts, you go up to every one of your teachers and tell them how important they were for you this year. Do those things, and you'll start to realize, hey, I gotta get up and go. Do the right thing, and you have. Otherwise, you won't be here today. I don't want to keep any longer. I've got a commitment. You have commitments. But I'm willing to handle any questions that you may have. I want you to have a great day, not just tomorrow, but forever. You're very lucky to be here. All the teams that are here, luck does play a role. The harder you work, the luckier you get. I always tell my players, you show me a player that doesn't make a mistake, and I'll show you a player that's not trying. I often say to myself, my high school coach told me that, and I always remember that. Show me a guy that doesn't make a mistake, and I'll show you a person that's not trying. So, tomorrow, enjoy it. I'm excited. I wish I could play. I know some of the men out in this audience were outstanding players, and I know they feel the same way. Some are in coaching capacities right now, some are parents. Remember, hugs and kisses are much better than goals. Much better. Anybody can score a goal. Anybody can make a great save. But you have people that helped you get where you are today. That's why I want you to stand up and think about that. I think about it every day. My mother and father came from Ireland. I was the last of eight children. Five brothers in the Second World War. It was a very, very difficult time. That was the greatest generation. Good luck to you all. God bless you. And I hope things go extremely well for you. Does anybody have a question? Well, Ryan Les, I'm going to have to give you the $100. I bet Brian. If someone would ask a question, I would present it with $100. So Brian, when I get off the stage, I'll give you the $100. You got it.